Hi everybody, welcome back uh, after a little bit of a break following the completion of the uh, 1 200 scale trumpet of Bismarck behind me. Uh, and I'm now ready to move on to a new project on the channel, a new build series. And I'm going to be building this, which is Italeri's 132 scale Tornado GR4. And this is a relatively new issue from Italeri. And generally it's had pretty good reviews. There are one or two uh, small issues, fixable issues, that I'm going to talk about a little bit at the beginning of the uh, video. And then I'll move on and show you uh, the aftermarket, just to run through the aftermarket that I'm going to be using during the build. A lot of the aftermarket parts are commissioned by the Tornado SIG and I'll talk about how you can get these. Uh, but I've also got some Edward parts as well, some red kit bits and pieces. Uh, so we'll get over to the bench and I'll go through those issues that I'm going to be fixing early on in the build and also we'll take a look at the aftermarket. Okay, let's start by taking a look at a couple of things on the plastic content in the kit. And the first thing I suppose to have a think about is the scale of the panel lines which I think are a little bit too deep and I've seen a couple of these kits built up where there's not been any work done on the panel lines and they do look too much when compared with uh, photographs. So I'm going to have to think about some way of uh, fixing that possibly uh, a coat of Mr. Surfacer in the panel lines and then just wiped off might just lessen the effect of them. Uh, I think one thing that I'm going to avoid doing is a really heavy panel line wash on them because that'll just accentuate them even more. But uh, as you can see, they're pretty heavy and I don't think we can get away with not doing anything with those. So uh, we'll probably be tackling some of that in the first build episode of the series. Whilst we're on this sprue, the other thing that's quite well known about this kit now, and uh, I've got to thank my friend uh, Phil, uh, who's a member of the Tornado SIG, and also one of my patrons over on Patreon. And Phil's done a fix for a problematic fit of this underplate here, which connects to the main underside of the aircraft which is this part here and that butt joint at the between the two parts on this sort of line here uh, leads to a gap unless it's corrected uh, and I think that's just down to the tabs being slightly too big and it just pushes the two parts apart when uh, you try to join them up uh, the other thing if that's not corrected it tends to push the nose of the aircraft up a little bit so we need to sort that out but it's an easy fix another issue with the kit is the nose gear leg which is here on the sprue and it's really down to the fact that the oleo is too far extended uh, and what that does again it gets the aircraft to sit up a little bit on its nose rather than the characteristic downward sit of the front part of the aircraft uh, now, you could fix that by replacing this oleo section and drilling it out with some rod uh, to the correct length. And that's, and again, a fairly easy fix. I think there's probably some work to do with the torque links as well. But uh, again, that's quite an easy fix. I'm not going to be bothering with that because I'm going to replace the whole of the undercarriage in the kit with a uh, fairly new set from a company... Uh, in the Far East called 3D Shoot Expert. They're coming into the country uh, to Nigel at the Tornado SIG uh, hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. So the 3D replacement parts are reinforced as well. They've got some sort of steel or metal uh, core to them so it's nice and strong uh, and the detail on them as you can see from the inset photographs is really pretty impressive. I've seen one painted up by Phil and it really does make a big difference. They're absolutely fantastic uh, 3D print. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. 
But if you don't want to go to the lengths of uh, aftermarket undercarriage, uh, the modifications to get this to sit correctly, this nose gear to sit correctly, is reasonably straightforward, I think. Now, whilst we're uh, talking about the Tornado SIG, I want to just run through a few parts that I got from them at the recent Stamford show. These are from Nigel. And I'll leave a list of all the aftermarket that I'm going to be using on this particular build in the video description, along with the contact details for Nigel if you want to get any of these parts for yourself for your GR4 build. Uh, the first thing that is fairly essential in the uh, if you're building the GR4 from the Atelier kit is to get a pair of these 1500 litre fuel tanks. These are the riveted style. And that's because all we get in the Italeri kit are these much larger, uh, I think they're probably 2,000 litre tanks or 2,200 litre tanks, I'm not sure, with the four fins on them. Uh, this wasn't present on my particular aircraft. I've not got a single reference photograph of it carrying these tanks. And so these are fairly essential uh, upgrades. So what's nice about uh, these particular tanks is that you, they come in two parts, as you can see, and they come with integral, very finely cast fins at the back. Uh, the other nice thing is that we have these two rings here, which slot into the casting and make sure that the two parts line up exactly. So sometimes with uh, resin tanks that come in two parts like this, it's difficult to get the cut nice and square such that the two halves go together perfectly. But with those rings, we shouldn't have any trouble with that. The other nice thing about replacing the plastic tanks with these riveted ones is that if Italeri had provided these tanks, uh, you wouldn't really have been able to retain the rivet detail on them whereas obviously with these you're going to be able to do that fairly easily. So that's a fairly straightforward upgrade for the kit uh, and as I said it's essential for my particular build uh, which is ZA412 which in all the reference photographs I can find of that aircraft is carrying these uh, smaller 1500 litre tanks. The next thing that we need to take a look at is the pylons and you can see that I've got a pair or a set of uh, replacement pylons for GR4. These are the RAF type and I think the issue is that the pylons that are provided straight out of the box in the Italeri kit are the Italian style pylons which are slightly different. So for an accurate RAF GR4 uh, these are what you need. They come with the uh, rail adapters on the side and I've also got uh, a pair of launch rails, these LAU7 rails, uh, again for a GR4 which fit onto these rail adapters here on the uh, inboard pylons. We also get the outboard pylons as well in the set and these are really nicely cast. They're at least on a par with the plastic, if not uh, probably a little bit better. There's certainly finer panel detail on them. So again, they should be a good upgrade to the model. Then we have this, which is the uh, TARDIS and late style tabulators. These are suitable for late GR4s from 2012 onwards. And these obviously replace uh, two or three parts in the uh, Italeri kit. This has a little bit more detail than the Italeri kit as well. You can see that there are all the cables and so on which could easily be added I suppose with wire but this just saves you the job of doing that and that's the accurate rear cockpit instrumentation for as I said the late GR4. Next we've got uh, a pair of Martin Baker seats I will get some uh, close-up photographs of these for the end of the video so you can just check them out. These are 3D printed with integral seat belts as you can see and with some careful painting they should look really nice in the cockpit. The uh, seats on the kit are not too bad from what I've seen on built examples and they do come with 
uh, harness details on the uh, photo etch set. This is from the kit. So I think the seats can be made up uh, into a fairly uh, good replica, but uh, these I would prefer and I think they'll look better than the kit items. I think when the time comes I will actually build up the kit items and we'll do a comparison of how they look compared with these 3D printed seats. The last thing from uh, my haul from Stamford is this set which is described as an exterior detail set and what it comprises is uh, these two panels with intake scoops on them and these are much more uh, in scale in other, way, in other words the deeper you can't really see a blank at the bottom of them and they're much sharper as well the edges of the intake particularly on this part are much sharper than on the kit. The last part is this which is a scoop that goes on the underside of the nose and that comes with the uh, front of the scoop opened up to a nice depth and also the holes which look like uh, vent holes of some sort uh, on the underside. Now you could uh, drill those out, they're marked out on the artillery kit but it's uh, there's quite a number of them, there's at least 30 to 40 of those that you'd have to drill out with what looks like a 0.2 or a 0.3 millimeter drill. So it's not beyond the bounds of possibility, it's just obviously a lot more time saving to use this part straight from the print. So that's a roundup of the stuff that I got from, as I said, the Tornado SIG. And take a look at the uh, Facebook page if you're interested in either the parts or you're interested in the Tornado. You don't want to know more about it, as I do, I'm no expert on the aircraft. Uh, but the guys at the SIG are. Some of them are either ex-ground uh, crew or air crew. Uh, so they're a great resource if you want to know a little bit more. If you get stuck on any uh, detail, I'm sure there'll be someone there that can uh, fill us in. Moving on to the uh, rest of the aftermarket. I've got a set of Edward masks here. These are the T-Face masks, which include the interior canopy as well. Uh, and also the detonation cord mask as well. So I think if you're going to get a mask, you might as well just get the internal and external mask as well. Next up, we've got this airscale set of modern cockpit instruments. And it's really a bit of a pity that we need to buy this. Uh, because the Italeri kit doesn't contain any decals for the analogue instruments. Uh, we get some decals for the... Uh, screens but not the analogue instruments which is a pity and a particularly on a 132 scale model uh, and one of this price I think it's only right that you could expect to have some decals for the instruments. It's a similar story with the HK Lancaster that I built that uh, amazingly has not got any instrument decals in it. I hope it's not a trend from manufacturers that they're going to start to skimp on that because it's a real shame for those of you that don't want to go to the extra expense of having to buy aftermarket decals to replace something that's missing in the kit altogether. We have a set of master pitot tube and angle of attack probes. That's these little brass ones here which go on the side of the aircraft. These are a lot more robust and a bit finer than the ones in the kit. So again, I think that's a reasonable investment. Next up, we've got these, which is a set of res kit exhaust nozzles for the Italeri kit. These are multi-part assemblies, as you can see. I'm not going to get them all out just now. Uh, but obviously, when we get to that part of the build, I'll go in some detail as to how these go together. So those are possibly a little bit of a luxury. Uh, I think that from what I've seen, the kit exhausts look reasonable. These will be a little bit better but you're going to have to judge whether or not it's worth the expense of the aftermarket exhausts. Now I've got a few items which have been sent over by my friend Phil which includes these. Again I'm going to get some close-up photographs of these for you uh, for the end of the video. These are switches for the cockpit. I'll be taking out all the molded in uh, switch gear and replacing them with these uh, 3D printed parts. So we have various covered toggle switches. 
these are house couplings actually and various styles of other switches for the instrument panels and the side consoles particularly. These are from a company called Enes or Enez. I don't know quite how to uh, pronounce those. But uh, Phil sent me these over to help with the build and get that cockpit just right. And he also sent me this, which is useful. It's a 60 gram nose weight, all ready to fit into the nose cone, which uh, will save me a job with my liquid gravity. Phil also sent me uh, these, which are Edward Brassin, as you can see, a Bos 107 and a Sky Shadow ECM pod. Now, I think that... The Boz pod in particular, from memory, is a little bit long in the kit. So this one is correctly sized and should be a little bit better appearance uh, once it's fitted to the model. They're also, both of these are a little bit better detailed than the kit parts with uh, final panel detail on them. So I'm grateful to Phil for sending those over. In fact, I think it's the Boz pod that's no longer available. Uh, in the brass in range. I'm not sure why. I would have thought it would be a popular enough addition to a lot of 32 scale kits. The last thing to talk about is the uh, scheme that I'm going to be using in the kit. And you can see that I've got uh, this sheet from Fantasy Print Shop uh, Euro Decals with five options on it. Now I'm going to be going for this one, which is the Dan Buster's 70th anniversary. As I said earlier, it's ZA412. Lots of really good references for this. Again, on the Tornado Sigan, I'll leave a reference for that group of photographs uh, in the video description. So this is our aircraft. There is one slight issue if you are modeling this aircraft to get it accurate uh, and that's that there's quite a prominent uh, decal on the targeting pod under the nose which has the ground crew names on it uh, and that's not provided on the uh, sheet here so i contacted the uh, guys at the fantasy print shop and they've printed me off some custom made decals to correct that omission. Obviously we only need one, we've got uh, eight there. So uh, that gives us an accurate sheet for this particular aircraft that we're going to be modelling. As you can see the uh, scheme's really quite striking and uh, hopefully on this particular size model it's going to look uh, pretty impressive, I hope it is. So that's a quick uh, preview of what we're going to be getting up to over the next few weeks whilst uh, we're building this Italeri kit. I think overall it's had pretty good uh, reviews since it was released fairly recently with just the issues that I mentioned uh, earlier on in the video to sort out, namely the overdone panel lines, the fit of the underside uh, fuselage components uh, and probably the nose gear uh, overextension as well. But uh, they're fairly easily corrected, and I think the Tornado in any scale looks pretty impressive, but in 132, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. So I'm going to be making a start on this in the next uh, two or three days, and hopefully I'll get a video update out to you as part one. So if you want to follow the build series, uh, which is coming up, as I said, over the next few weeks, uh, you might want to subscribe to the channel and make sure your notifications are switched on. And obviously, as soon as the uh, videos are published, the first part's published, you'll get to know about it. So I'm really looking forward to the build, and uh, hopefully, if you've got the kit, you'll dig it out and make a start alongside me. So uh, thanks for joining me for this one, everybody. I'm going to uh, get on with this now and hopefully see you soon. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Bye for now.